Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Introduction to Psychology Part 1 PSY 312 by Dear Knowledge. Today in this video we're going to start Lecture 2 which is composed in Chapter 1 in which we're going to study Lesson 2 which is Historical Background and Schools of Psychology so it will be a brief survey. In Lesson 2 we're going to start uh, Part 1 which is Historical Background of Psychology. So in historical background today, we're going to study historical perspective of modern psychology, founding ideas of ancient times, ancient Greeks weave, philosophical roots, biological roots, and beginning of experimental psychology. So let's start with founding ideas of ancient times. In the founding ideas of ancient times, it, psychology has a long past with a short history. A long past because the roots of psychology lies in our curiosities to know about ourselves and our fellow men. This curiosity has always remained a crowning characteristics of mankind ever since its evolution in the present form. But psychology has a short history because it has emerged as an organized body of scientific inquiry recently or hardly over a century ago. So. If we look at the historical records of evolution, it would be observed that many divergent systems and views existed right from the ancient times. However, the most early people were not able to understand and predict natural events if objectively. They mostly used to explain such events in terms of supernatural powers and good or evil spirits. Such views of ancient people are known as demonology. As the peoples gradually developed the idea of soul and considered that soul is an entity that rests inside mortal body. The soul itself is immortal that exists even after death. The basis of this explanation was the experience that soul could leave one's body and visit other places as we visualize during dreams. Such prevalent ideas led to the development of methodologies which gradually become powerful and complex enough to explain various curiosities of human being during ancient times. So, thus we conclude that it have long passed due to curiosities to know about self and others, and short history, because it emerged as an organized body of scientific inquiry. Another term, demonology, was introduced because demonology means events that are explained in terms of supernatural powers and or good or evil spirits. They also give the concept of soul, which means that soul is an entity that rests inside mortal body, that leaves uh, one's body and visits other places. So its uh, soul itself is immortal, which means that it exists even after death. So such prevalent ideas which mentioned above were also considered as methodologies. Now let's come to ancient Greek sweep. In ancient Greeks weave against these methodologies and analogies, ancient Greek weaves ma made some significant contrib and valuable contributions in diverse areas such as art, literature and philosophy. Their beliefs no doubt brought some notable changes in ideas about the universe that people hold. People now began to realize that the efficiency of reasoning and calculating and understanding and natural events their beliefs presented the world as a very orderly place to live in. Such beliefs were the basic thoughts of Western thinkers and it is believed that modern psychology also began in Western philosophical thoughts. So the Western philosophical perspective that developed in Greece had two divergent appro <coughs> approaches. The empiricist weave or empiricism led by Aristotle and rationalism by Plato. Aristotle, he was a student of Plato and he gave the concept of empiricism. He also gave the idea of elementalism. The empiricist weave led by Aristotle and the latter weave that derived from Aristotle weave is known as rationalism led by Plato. So let's talk about Aristotle. Aristotle promoted the idea of elementalism meaning thereby that anything complex, complex may be understood through reducing it in, to its elements. So in, in psychology, this idea of elementalism took the form of analyzing mind 
by reducing it to sensation and associations. Let's talk about the Plato. He was a student of Socrates and he was a teacher of Aristotle. He emphasized rationalism as opposed to empiricism. He lays emphasis on reasoning and he said that knowledge is derived from reason. So the latter view of Plato emphasized that rationalism as opposed to empiricism. This view lays emphasis on reasoning. For him, knowledge is derived from reason, which is valid as valid as knowledge itself. So according to the sensory, uh, accordingly, the sensory inputs were considered as imperfect source of knowledge and therefore by analyzing the mind into sensations would not be as valid as knowledge as knowing the mind through reasoning. Again, uh, he emphasized rationalism as opposed to empiricism and he said that knowledge is derived from reasons. So uh, sensory input was considered as imperfect source of knowledge. They said that anything analyzing the mind into sensation would uh, not be as valid as knowing the mind through reasoning. So let's talk about the philosophical roots. In philosophical roots, we're going to study the reigns of science, Francis Bacon, René Descartes, Saint Augustine and Saint Thomas, Leibniz, Spinoza, John Locke, George Berkeley and David Hume, David Hartley, James and John Stuart Mill, Alexander Bain and Spencer, Herbert Spencer, Yvonne Pavlov and our Edward Thorndike. So we're going to go a brief survey through these topics. So let's study about the Renaissance of science. Ancient, uh, as uh, mentioned about the ancient Greek view, so after that there was a significant transitions uh, of human thoughts from Middle Age to modern times. This transition period is known as a Renaissance of science. During this period, the trade was on the increase, explorations were being made and ancient writings were being rediscovered. Such discoveries and rediscoveries, particularly cosmic science and physical science, provided some realistic pictures about the universe and human thoughts. And human thoughts began to analyze and think of various events in somewhat realistic terms. Francis Bacon Francis Bacon's thought of logic is a good evidence of such transitions to new approach. So he bitterly criticized the method of deducing knowledge from ancient sources which were applied by the medieval scholars as it was unfruitful and unprofitable. Instead, he proposed inductive method and insti insisted upon the observation of natural events to formulate laws that can explain the events. So he, in his insistence on inducing knowledge through observation influenced psychology to study various aspects of behavior, applying inductive methods based on empiricism. Empiricism facts, you can see. Uh, so facts gathered through observations of behavioral events such as habits, education, friendship, praise, reproof, etc. Perhaps for this reason, Bacon is often regarded as the originator of social psychology by Durant 1949. So his method, however, lacked precision and systemization, which could be possible only in a well-equipped laboratory of modern psychology. Further, he also believed that certain threats are beyond the scope of human investigations as they relate to divine real, divine real, hence not accessible by reasoning, so for this reason he could not make entry into theology. Let's talk about the René Descartes and philosophical roots. René Descartes in 19, 1596 to 1650, he was a mathematician. He influenced, uh, he influenced the development of modern psychology. So, René Descartes is another figure who influenced the development of modern psychology. 
He emerged in France and is famous for his assertion, cogito ergo su, which means, therefore, I think, therefore, I am. Or you can say, I think, therefore, I exist. So he proposed that mind and body are separate, but interact with each other. He also argued that animals lack soul and therefore are essential machines. So to discard ideas are put in mind by God and visualized by mental faculty through intuitions. Obviously, Descartes emphasized that ideas are innate and inherited because they are put by God and which are reasoned by mind. This is true, uh, though Descartes was a mathematician, his views were not scientific in the modern psychology or in a modern sense. So yet his emphasis on induction and reasoning influenced psychology uh, to uh, psychology moving towards empirical concept of psychological effects. So you can say that his emphasis on induction and reasoning influenced psychology moving towards empirical concept of psychological effects. So therefore, you can say that his contributions are considered significant in founding of modern psychology as an empirical science. So, <clears throat> later uh, philosophers like uh, Saint Augustine and Saint Thomas also made significant contribution uh, in founding of psychology as a systematic body of knowledge. So. They advocated the concept of dualism, which means mind and body are two distinct aspects of human being, and these two are not interrelated in any way. So, hence, uh, there exists a complete division between mind and body. So, this kind of concept is evidenced from expressions about certain aspects of behavioral events, such as, while well, spirit is, or soul is willing, but flesh is weak, or you can say, he may act down, but he has got a mind like steel trap. So these uh, words or these sentences uh, were the kind of evidence of dualism. So these expressions obviously provide evidence to the fact that mind and body are two separate and distinct aspects. But some other philosophers like Leibniz, Descartes, and Spinoza attempt to relate mind and body in different ways. Like, for example, Descartes offered the concept of interactionism as a solution to the problem. He viewed that mind and body as separate aspects, but proposed that these two interact with each other. And Leibniz formulated the theory of psychological parallelism that presumes that mind and body both functions as parallel system. Spinoza, on the other hand, proposed that mind and body are inseparable or inseparable aspects. So this view is known as psychological double aspectism. So the psychological held monismic views about the mind and body. This suggests yeah, this view suggests that though mind and body are two different aspects, but these two can be related to one another in certain ways and accordingly. So the concept of interconnectionism, parallelism, or double aspectism, etc. were proposed. So um, around the same period, some British philosophers like John Locke, George Berkeley, and David Hume came forward to protest the above views of philosophers and launched a movement known as empiricism. This movement, in fact, had a very profound impact on founding of psychology as a prosperous science. Subsequently, a movement known as associationism was derived from empiricism. Uh, this new movement was led by David Hartley, James and John Stuart Mill, Alexander Bain and Herbert Spencer. So they were primarily concerned with formulating the principles or laws that govern ideas getting hooked together or get associated together. So this movement had again a very deep impact upon the principles of structuralism and modern principles of learning. So the principle of associationism in fact served is the founding stone for formulating learning theories of 
Ivan Pavlov, Ivan Pavlov's conditioning, and Edward Thorndike's connectionism. So <clears throat> we can see that the ancient philosophers, philosophical thoughts have directly influenced the founding of psychology as a modern systematic science. So let's talk about the biological roots. In biological roots, we're going to study John Buller, Claude Bernard, Marshall Hall, Piri Florence, Paul Broca, Charles Darwin. The physiological foundation of modern medicines were laid during the 1800 to 1870 with the work of John Muller and Claude Bernard, Experimental Physiology. Their work had greatly influenced psychology in laying the foundation of physiological psychology. Muller had proposed the doctrine of specific nerve energies, which states that each sensory nerve yields a specific kind of a sensation, irrespective of how it might be stimulated. So Muller holds that we become aware of our world indirectly through stimuli, which in turn generate nerve impulses in our senses, travel through nerve fibers and terminate in the brain. So further. Marshall Hall and Piri Florence and Paul Broca studied brain functions. Uh, Charles Darwin, a British scientist, worked in the field of biology and genetics. His work brought revolutionary changes in the area of genetics. Uh, he published a book um, named Origin of Species, uh, which was published in 1859, was very much influential. He proposed the theory of evolution. According to this theory, human beings are one species on a, quantum, on a continuum. Hence, like other species, human beings also regulate by similar nature of selective pressure as other organisms. So this theory further proposed that since human beings share the behavioral characteristics of other human or uh, other organisms on the evolutionary continuum, much can be known about human behavior by studying the behavior of other organisms. So this paved the way for psychologists to conduct experiments using rats, cats, and monkeys, and further led to the emergence of new field, which is uh, called a comparative psychology. So the last topic is beginning of experimental psychology. Uh, in the beginning of experimental psychology, we're going to study Sir Charles Darwin, Muller, Hermann Helmholtz, Ernst, Heb Ernst Weber, Gustav Fischner, Franz Gall, uh, Spurzum, and Sir Francis Galton. During the first half of 19th century, scientific studies in various fields such as physiology, physics and Darwin's theory of evolution had greatly influenced the emergence of scientific psychology. So the beginning of experimentations on psychological process can be rooted in the discoveries of the, um, about brain, nervous system, and anatomical, anatomical studies relating to the localization of psych, uh, psychological functioning, which is phrenology and sense physiology, etc. So these studies stimulated many psychologists to study the physiological or, or biological basis of human thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So in order to study the biological basis of psych psychological processes, the experimental methods of natural sciences were applied. So in, in, the, in this context, uh, the work of Sir Charles Bell, Muller's uh, and Muller's uh, doctrine of specific nerve energies, and Hermann Helmholtz study to measure the speed of nerve impulse are some of the outstanding contributions in the emergence of modern psychology. So further advances made in the field of physiology gave rise to a new field of experimental psychology which is known as psychophysics. So psychophysics is mainly concerned with detecting the relationships between physical stimuli and their mental processes. The work of Ernst Weber and Gustav Fichtner are notable contributors who had evolved psychophysical methods to solve detection problems of the psychophysical relations and proposed laws that govern detection of absolute and differential lemons. 
So again, the concept of phrenology originally practiced by Franz Gall, uh, which subsequently was modified and expanded by Spurzum, had greatly influenced psychology in developing an uh, understanding about various mental faculties and the locations in the brain. So their work helped psychologists as well as physiologists or neuroscientists in localizing the sensory, motor, and associative areas in the brain. So Francis, Galt, uh, Francis Galton, the cousin of Darwin, was still another genius British scientist who gave a sudden stroke to the intellectual world, uh, world by publishing a book named Hereditary Genius and came with the conclusion that outstanding abilities or powerful mental functions are inherited. He also highly impressed by he was highly impressed by the concept of variations and became staunch supporter of constant variations from generation to generation and the concept of individual differences uh, his emphasis on individual differences generated a lot of researchers which led to the founding of a new branch of psychology which is called psychometric a great contribution to psychological uh, statistics so these contributions attract many psychologists to develop psychological tests for assessing various mental abilities by following scientific areas so we see that right from the ancient times various methodology method methodologies and analogies uh, philosophical thoughts, empiricist movements, and development in the field of neurophysiology, phrenology, psychophysics, and evolutionary doctrine, all were instrumental in the foundings of modern experimental psychology. This was the end of our part one. In the next video, we're going to go for the modern uh, the school of modern psychology. And for the detailed video, on historical background of psychology we're going to launch our new video uh, based on the uh, full course of history of psychology so if you like this video don't forget to like and if you want to stay notified for the upcoming upcoming videos you can subscribe to my channel because we're gonna uh, complete this whole course of introduction to psychology and plus you can share our video with other friends because sharing is caring. Till then, Allah Hafiz.